It's pretty hard to read from a blank sheet. The first scripture reading this morning is from the book of Acts, chapter 9, verses 1 through 9. Meanwhile, Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, because they heard the voice, but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight, and he neither ate nor drank. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let the people say amen. 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 This last week was just uh, so much fun working with the Vacation Bible School students. And so as Shelley said, thank you for everyone who helped make that possible. I decided that throughout the course of this series of sermons, last weekend and this week, so just a short series, I'd engage some of the different lessons from Vacation Bible School. And so today I want to take on the the last of those lessons um, about this person, Saul. We got a little bit of an introduction to Saul. Uh, We read a little earlier in Acts, we learn more about him. But he is a person who is very much against uh, the early movement of, of Jesus. He's against the disciples. He's breathing threats. Um, he's a person that uh, is causing lots of havoc. And, and, uh, and sometimes we might be convinced that, that he wouldn't be a good agent of God. And yet, uh, that's not the case. This persecuting Saul will soon become the proclaiming Paul maybe the most influential person of all of Christianity. And so maybe the invitation for us, first of all, is to not count somebody out for who knows what God will do with them. I invite you to listen for a word that God wants to say to you today as I read uh, the rest of the story from chapter 9 of Acts. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, and he answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up, go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas, look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. At this moment, he is praying, and he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is an an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on your way here has sent me so that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptized and after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days he was with the disciples in Damascus, and immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. And all who heard him were amazed and said, Is not this the man who made havoc in Jerusalem among those who invoked this name? And has he not come here for the purpose to bring them bound before the chief priests? Saul became increasingly more powerful 
and confounded the Jews who lived in Damascus by proving that Jesus was the Messiah. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. On Thursday, we concluded our Vacation Bible School, and Pastor Shelley and I got to be a part of the storytelling area, which was actually here in the sanctuary. And so we have the students come up, and they'd sit in these front pews right up here, and we'd tell them a little bit, and then we would have them come and dress up, and we would act out the different stories from the Bible. We engaged five different stories, and we'd have them be a part of it, and, and it was powerful for them to experience those thoughts and, and embody those different characters and to see what lessons they might learn. Well, on Thursday, we had a program, so we had to change our plan and pattern, and so we had a group of us um, do the acting for this. Um, uh, we'd have a group of us do an acting for this, and so Brad Eastland came up, and he was Saul, and I got to be Ananias. And so I started the, the acting part over here in the corner, and I was praying. I was down on my knees praying, and, and all of a sudden, Shelly was narrating, and all of a sudden, as she was telling how this uh, story played out and, and these feelings that Ananias had, I almost... I connected with those feelings. You know, that's usually what happens when you act out something, you, you embody that character. And I was feeling how much anxiety Ananias must have been feeling. You know, to, to, to leave his comfort of his safety of his home to go and talk to this person who has the power to bind him, maybe to end his life. And so I got up and I came over to, to Saul and and I was thinking how many times we have questions in our lives about other people and how tempted we are to be quick to judge. We, we are a people who do that so often. It takes us just a few moments and we will, we will figure out if we like this person or we don't like them. If, they're, if they align with us or they don't align with us. And we'll put them in some box, some category, and we'll make some judgment about one another. Unfortunately, we do that as people. We do that in who we are in our lives. We are quick to judge the people around us. And I was thinking about how I'm so grateful that Ananias let go of some of those judgments and let Saul be Saul in that moment and, and let him be who he is. So Ananias comes over and, and I got to do this. I got to come over here and I got to put my hands on Saul and, and speak these words. Did you hear the first words that Saul said, or that Ananias says to Saul? He doesn't say, you traitor, or you mean guy, or, or some other you know, words of, of not so nice. He says, brother Saul. Brother Saul. Just a few moments ago, he wouldn't have said brother Saul. But Jesus has invited him to, to risk himself in stepping across uh, into this new relationship. And to see what's possible in this person. And he blesses and welcomes him into the, the church. And risks himself by saying, Brother Saul. Sometimes I think we're invited to have greater expectations of ourselves and of one another. Greater expectations of what God wants to do with us. And how we can grow in our likeness of Christ. I mean, that's our calling as disciples. Is to grow ever more in the likeness of Jesus Christ. To be changed in who we are. God's in the business of change and transition, transformation for us. And what does it look like for us to embody that ourselves? One of the lessons we taught our students for Vacation Bible School is Jesus is at work. Jesus is at work through us. That we're called to be his hands and feet, his instruments in the world. And maybe we do that by, by offering... Um, Offering great expectations for one another, of welcoming one another, not judging one another. Jesus tells us not to do that, and yet we do it so well. How do we let those things go and encounter one another and who God wants them to be now? My guess is you've had an encounter, a situation where you've met somebody uh, that you knew before in a previous time. Maybe you've gone to a family reunion or you've gone to a high school reunion and you see persons, and you encounter persons, and you knew who they used to be and the, the person they used to be. And how, how sometimes we are tempted 
to see them just as they were a long time ago, instead of encountering them who they are today. I went to my uh, 20th high school reunion a year ago uh, and met with my other classmates. Um, it was a real small school. We had 17 in my class. Uh, went to my, and we had a gathering together of part of the group, and, and I, I really worked hard not to see them as the person I knew them to be 20 years ago, instead of giving them grace and seeing who they are today. And in lots of ways, that's what happens here. Uh, Saul, uh, Ananias comes and puts his hands on Saul and says, Brother Saul, and I, I remember when we were acting it out, I got to uh, put my, eye, my hand over his eyes and, and moved them away like all of a sudden he had new vision. And I put my hand on his chest and reminded myself of the spirit that is alive within him. You see, it's God's grace that goes above and, and before Saul to transform his life to become Paul. It's that same grace that works in and through you and I to change our lives, to transform us in who we are, to make us new, to make us the individuals, the instruments that God needs at this time in this place. Back in June, uh, a couple of us from the congregation, Shelley and I and our kids, we went to our annual conference meeting, which was down in Wichita. We went down there, met with other persons from the United Methodist churches in Kansas and Nebraska. And uh, one of the times there was a, a pr presentation that happened about a ministry of transformation. It was a ministry of, as I think is happening in Topeka, um, United Methodist uh, women are going into a prison and are, are encountering people who are in prison, inmates. And not just in the sense of, hi, what's your name, but actually partnering with them and, and seeking to transform their lives of, of speaking words of truth and, and manifesting the love of Jesus Christ to them, calling them to do Bible study and to grow. And, and the Holy Spirit has been working in this ministry, changing these people's lives. And it was powerful to hear of the good news of, of new life and new beginnings that have happened for these different persons. And it was even more profound when the speaker who has been telling us this story and uh, speaking to the 2,000 of us that had gathered there reveals that she had been an inmate in that facility herself and that she had been one of the persons who had an experience of transformation and new beginning. And it made it even more profound to hear of this good work that's happening and knowing that this is a person who had experienced it firsthand. Friends, God's in the business of changing lives, of giving us new beginning. Sometimes we tell ourselves that we've messed up too much or someone else in your family or your place of work says, I've, I've messed up too much or I've gone down the wrong road too far or I, I don't know how to get myself out of this mess. And the good news is that God can enter your life and my life and give us a new beginning of give us a second chance of, of call us to receive that grace and try again. If God can do it for Saul, maybe the most unlikely disciple of Jesus Christ and become a, a profound witness in the world, why would God not be able to do it with you and I? Friends, we're invited to not judge, but to know that God works through us, through our invitation, through our grace, through our welcome. Let's pray. Gracious God, we ask that you might work in our lives, that you might give us an assurance of your love for us, that you might bless us and strengthen us, that you might give us the courage to, to step out of our comfort zone even when we, when we maybe have been hurt before and reach across and welcome someone else, to invite them into relationship with you, to know that you seek to use us to make a difference in the world. God, we ask that you might heal us, that you might continue to make us more and more like your child, your disciples, and then use us. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.